um, everyone who I've briefed is different. Some people, uh, President Obama was a reader um, and just voraciously consumed it. Uh, JFK wanted three by five cards in his pocket. So the notion that you're going to have someone different who you're briefing, that you have to figure out a way to convey the information because it, ultimately that's what you're trying to do. You are trying to present information in a way that is both heard and then can be used. Um, so his difference. The other thing that's the same is intelligence is massively inconvenient. Um, it actually typically steals some of the decision space of the president. So you're walking in there making things difficult because of what you're presenting. And you are limiting the choices because once it's heard, it is heard and it exists. And there's nothing different about this president. It is a foundational piece of his morning. It is a foundational piece of NFC meetings, whether that was 20 years ago or now. The third thing is every president for whom I've worked has wished intelligence could say things that it can't. <laughs> right? You wish that some piece of truth existed that would allow you to justify and that. And none of that is hard for the intelligence community to navigate. What's different about this president? Number one is he is the first in my experience that had no foundation or framework to understand what is what the limits of intelligence are, what the purpose of it was, and the way that we discuss it. So um, I do a lot of sports analogies. It's like playing pickup basketball with one runner, right? Everyone else knows how the game moves and plays, and you have one person that comes in and plays, and it's just so different that that in and of itself was different. He asked different questions. He pursued it differently. He had different trust because he is probably the first president that arrived with no framework and a world that has massively available information with infinite people offering opinion that oftentimes sound the same, but in fact are grittier because they don't have to have the same standard. And he's different because he is much more economic in the way he sees the world and the intelligence community traditionally is much more political military, purposely so. And so we were scrambling a bit to try and produce intelligence that was foundationally useful for someone who was interested in making trades and deals and be able to explain how we see the world when we were all the things that other people have been. So same and different. I found him actually kind of a fun brief um, because he was interactive, he would challenge you. Um, and again, because the role of intelligence is to be, provide wisdom, clarity, and insight, you can't wish that the recipient were different from where they were. Your challenge is to present it in a way that it can be heard. So I think that was something, and I think everyone who's been in the Oval Office with this president would say that that was true. Two follow-ups. Number, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I'm, um, and if you disagree with any of that, ask your question. <laughs> what, um, what kind of questions would he ask? And um, this is a weird question, but how long were the briefings? How long did they last? Uh, different time depending on the day, and I don't think that would... I just lost us. Uh, I don't think that would surprise any of you that it differed on the day. Uh, we typically would brief two or three times a week religiously. I can't think of a week where we didn't have a session. It would always start out with us presenting uh, a set of intelligence that we thought either were relevant to what he was doing or that needed to be heard. And I would say sometime, somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour would, and, be, mo would and, be, be typical. And the questions he would ask, just an example? Oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I just hadn't thought about that one. Uh, I would say two varieties. One, um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> right? And, and really, but, but, but again, remember intelligence is fundamentally a craft of uncertainty and of possibility, so that it doesn't put you off. It's, it's trying to catch up to how you adjudicate the sources that led him to believe that and how you respond to it. So one is the, I'm not sure I believe that, and the other one is second or, and third order effects. Why is that true? Why are we there? Why is this what you believe? Why do we do that? Those sorts of things. And again, disproportionately with a uh, economic bent to it. Last question before I get to Andrea. Okay. <laughs> Keep which going. Is, We're good. Which is um, that's your exit, your complicated uh -huh. exit. What do you know about it? 
so I <laughs> look like snickering in the background. This is fantastic. Uh, so on the simplest level, the president who appointed me to the position of principal deputy, which is the senior most career intelligence advisor, ultimately decided that he was not comfortable with me continuing as the acting director when Dan stepped down and there was a gap. And if you're the third kid of a naval officer who has for her whole career professed that she was simply a steward of the community, not the community itself, you give a cheery aye aye and you give the president the space. Do I think that he's wrong? Yes. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> 